want to thank you for joining us for another one of our devotionals. And today I'm going to continue what we've been talking about when it comes to being led by the Spirit of God. I know we've been on this topic for a while, but there is a lot to it. And I want to make sure I fully cover everything that you would need to know so that when you go into and you want to learn how to be led by the Spirit of God, you understand how it works, you understand how to do it, and you know you understand... <clears throat> How to recognize the voice and the leading of God for your life. Because I know some things can be things that Christians and people who are, you know, trying trying to figure this stuff out may not really know. You know, and it, it can be a trial and error process. And today I want to continue talking about it and kind of talk about one thing that I think can scare a lot of people when it comes to being led by the Spirit of God is the question, what if I miss it? You know, because I know that's a big deal, especially for individuals and in, it's your true heart's desire. You want to please God. You want to do what He wants you to do. You know, you want to follow His will for your life and you want to follow the leading and instruction of the Holy Spirit for your life. And sometimes we can get a little scared. We can get stuck and even paralyzed when we begin thinking, well, what if I miss it? And instead of acting out, you know, acting on what the Holy Spirit's telling you to do or telling to guide you or anything, you just kind of don't do anything at all. You're like, I'll just sit here and I'm not going to do anything because then if I don't mess up out, I can't miss it and I won't mess up and that kind of stuff. And I kind of want to talk about that today. You know, the first thing I want to talk about is not being scared to miss it. You know, and that can be a hard thing to do, especially when you get caught up in your head and you start thinking about well, what about this? What about this? What if what if something horrible happens? What if what if it opens up doors for this or opens up doors for that? I just want you to know if you actively pursue God, if you're actively in the word, you know, and you love him, don't get caught on the fear of missing it. You know, Second Timothy 1 7, it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power one of love, and one of self-control. In 1 John 4, 18, it tells us that there is no fear in love because perfect love casts out fear. And I want to kind of talk about this because when it comes to, you know, wanting to do, being led by the Spirit of God, wanting to move out and, and act in the Spirit of God, whether it's like, you know, hearing His voice and hearing His guidance for your life or when you feel prompted to go out and do things like go out and witness for some, to someone, go out and pray for someone, go out and, you know, give a word of encouragement to someone. You might be wondering, well, is this something that God wants me to do? Is this something that, you know, I just want to do? What if it's not God? What if I miss it? What if I mess everything up? You know, that kind of stuff. Don't allow that fear to take root in your heart. You know, and, and the big thing to check is check your heart motivation. You know, check yourself. Say, why am I doing this? Why do I want to hear the voice of God? Why do I want to step out? Why do I want to do this? Is it because of love? Is it because you know that God loves you and loves people? Or is it something else? Are you doing it because you want attention? Because you want recognition? Because you want to feel important? Well, if I do this, then I'll feel important and people will listen to me. Or I want to, you know, come across as really holy or religious or something like that. Or are you more concerned about what people are thinking about you and how people will perceive you and what people will say to you? Or are you just consumed with the love of God? And if you do want to move out and do things and say, God, I'm doing this because I love you. I want to walk in your ways. I want to obey you because I, I want to, because I want, because I love you. You know, because the Bible says, if you love God, you'll follow his commandments. So, you know, check yourself, check your heart motivations and really dig deep and ask yourself, what's really motivating me? You know, uh, an important thing is you can see this with um, something else to, to pay attention to. Is because God, when he asks us to do things, he doesn't, you know, he, he won't do something because of how we look or the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. First Samuel 16, 7. It says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his statue, stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For a man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You know, God will look at your heart. So if you're going after and serving him and you're like, God, I want to do the very best I can for you. Don't feel like if you miss it that God's going to be angry at you and frustrated at you because you're doing it with the right heart motivation. You're doing it because you want to please God. You're doing it because you want to do what's right. You're not doing it out of selfish intent or selfish desires or pride or anything else. You say, look, God, I love you and I want to do this. So if God sees your mistakes. You know, he's like, he'll look at you and be like, okay, that's okay. I know you messed up here. I know you messed up here, but I know your heart behind it. 
I know what you were trying to do, you know, and he, and he can teach us and guide us through those mistakes so we don't end up making the same one again, you know. A good example of this is like you have a kid, you know, wanting to bring breakfast in bed for the parent. So they get up early before the parents get up and they decide they're going to make breakfast. And we all know, you know, if they're depending on how young they are, they might even not even be able to cook. And they come out and, you know, they make breakfast for you and the, the bread's not toasted, the egg's still raw, you know, they have, have milk splattered all over the place, flour pattered on, the, pattered on their hands, on their face, you don't even know where it came from. They come in there with their little mess and like, I did this for you, you know, your first insect, you know, you're going to look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, you're going to be really sweet, you know, it's going to touch you. Even though it's a mess, what they, they, they tried to do, it may not have turned out quite right. But you're not going to be, you know, like, you horrible, awful child. You know, why would you think to do this for me? You know, you, you, you know, so you like look at them in their mess and maybe smile and laugh and be like, okay, I get what you're trying to do, but there's a better way to do it. <laughs> and that's kind of how God will treat us, you know, because we are his children. So don't allow yourself to get discouraged and get into fear. You know, John 14, 17, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives you do I give you. So don't let your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So when it comes to wanting to learn how to lead, be led by God, don't allow fear to come in and stop you from stepping out. Don't allow fear to come in and stop you, you know, the fear of missing it, to stop you from ever trying in the first place. You know, God doesn't want us to be afraid. In fact, He wants the total opposite. He wants us to trust Him, to be able to step out in faith, and to act. And, you know, it's okay if we miss it sometimes. Even, you know, all ministers of God, you can talk to any minister, it doesn't matter who they are, and they will tell you that they have missed it before. Because we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But you can't let that stop you from continuing to step out, stop you from continuing to grow, and stop you from doing what God's called you to do because you're scared to miss it. Don't let that happen, you know? It's kind of like riding a bike when it comes to being led by the Spirit of God. When you first start riding a bike, it can be hard. You know, you trip, you might fall off the bike, but just because you fall down a couple times doesn't mean you should stop. Because if you can keep practicing, you keep getting good at it, then you'll be able to ride the bike, no problem. It's the same thing with learning how to be led by the Spirit of God. Yeah, sometimes when we first start off, we might miss it sometimes. We might be wrong. We might, you know, not get it right. But if we keep pursuing God with our heart, going after Him, seeking His Spirit, seeking His guidance, we will learn how to be led by the Spirit of God. You know, and another thing to help encourage yourself with. I know when I first started learning this and I would get so worried and so nervous, like, well, what if it's not God? What if it's somebody else telling me something? What if it's my thoughts? What if it's my feelings? You know, all of that kind of stuff. And I was getting so nervous that I was like, I, I, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to step out. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't, you know, if the Holy Spirit told me to go pray for somebody, I didn't want to pray for him. You know, if the Holy Spirit told me to go give somebody a word of encouragement, I wouldn't want to go out and encourage them because I'd just be so nervous. I'm like, well, what if it's not God? What if it's, I'm just thinking this or whatever? And the Holy Spirit brought the scripture to my mind when it says to John 10, 27. And it said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So when, I, when he gave me that scripture, I began to meditate on it and pray that over my, my life so that I could get that confidence and I could say, no, the Bible tells me his sheep know my voice. I am his sheep. No, I'm part of his flock. I will know his voice and I will follow it. And I began to make that proclamation over my life and over myself. And it works like the word works and it gives you, gives, builds that faith for you. You know, and what if you do miss it? Because it does happen. And now I'm not going to say when you begin learning to be led by the Spirit of God, it's going to be 100% perfect. Because it's not. we got to learn these things. So what if we do miss it? What do you do? I want to talk on a few things because, you know, I don't want you to, to get, like, again, to help dispel fear and to help you overcome it and to know how to handle situations if you do miss it. You know, the first thing you need to do is admit you're wrong. You know, if you find out, if you say something and you thought it was from God or you thought God was telling you to do something and you either find out later it wasn't or you find out immediately. You know, sometimes you can start doing something and on the inside you know, no, this is wrong. You know, you've got to stop yourself and admit, say, you know what, I was wrong in this. I thought this was God, but it's not God. It was just me. You know, sometimes people will be wrong 
and they, they say it's God, but they, they have too much pride, so they don't want to admit that they were wrong. And they'll just blame it off on God. Well, no, God told me this, but, you know, maybe something else happened or maybe this happened or whatever. And they try to, like, make excuses or, or justify why they're still right and they didn't miss the mark and that, you know, all this kind of stuff. And when you do that, you're unable to learn and you won't be able to properly be led by the Spirit of God because you're not humble enough to receive correction. You're not humble enough to admit, like, hey, I'm wrong. And, you know, it's okay if you miss it. And it's, it's good to let people know. So then if you were wrong, you can, like, told somebody something and then you go back later and say, hey, look, you know, I told you this. I thought it was from God. I just want you to know I was wrong. You know, and it can be hard to do, but it'll help you and it will help that person so they're not standing on a false word or a false doctrine or a false hope that didn't come from God because then they would end up getting mad at God because they're like, well, God told me this, you know, because you told something that God didn't really say. So admit it. If you do something wrong, admit you're wrong. Apologize for it and, you know, go move on from it. Don't get stuck there. Another thing that can really be helpful is listening to godly instruction and correction especially if you want to submit yourself to somebody who's a seasoned minister of the Lord, who has godly character, who's mature in the faith, and has been tested and proven. You know, if you know individuals who, who you've seen who know the voice of God, who know how to be led by the Spirit of God, ask them questions. Submit yourself under them. You know, say, hey, teach me. How do you know this is God? You know, double check with them sometimes. Like, hey, I really feel this and this and this and this. Does this sound right to you scripturally? Does this sound like this would be from God? You know, to check those things with them. Now this, it doesn't hurt to have somebody who's a godly instructor, godly mentor in your life, who's been tested and proven, which means they know because they've walked through it, they've experienced things, they know how it works, to ask them these things and get advice from them. You know, a good example one time was Kenneth Hagin was teaching in a meeting. He was doing a whole... I think it was like nine weeks worth of teachings at this church. And he said there was a woman who would come in every night for the meetings. And right before they would take the offering, you know, they'd have a pause in the service, a lull in the service, because they're getting things ready to transition into the offering. And during that lull, every service, she would stand up and start speaking in tongues really loud for everybody to hear. And then if nobody would interpret the tongues, then she would interpret them herself. And she would do this every single meeting every single night at the exact same time and he was saying that even listening to her she was speaking the same tongues over and over and over again the same thing over and over and over again and he said he knew it was not from the lord she was just acting in her flesh you know she was just speaking in tongues from her you know speaking in tongues just to speak in tongues but not because she was being led to do so for the people of christ it was an out of order and he knew this because when, the, when she would begin to do that, instead of uplifting the congregation, instead of helping encourage the flow of the service, it would dampen it and it would slow it down and, and stifle things. And these the elders of the church, you know, one of the days he, he came in for a morning service, which he normally never did, but the pastor asked him to come in. So he came in for a morning service and did a lecture. And at the end of the lecture, some of the elders and deacons of the church asked him, about this particular thing, about if you pray in tongues or speak in tongues with interpretation, shouldn't it uplift and encourage the body of the body of Christ or uplift the service rather than dampen it? And you know, Kenneth Hagin was looking and he realized this woman was sitting right in front of them, the row in front of him, from where these guys were asking him this question, so he knew she could hear what he was saying. So he's like, Well, I don't want to talk about this right now. He's like, Why don't we talk about it later? because he didn't want to embarrass the woman. And, you know, the, the, one of the elders came up to him and said, no, you need to answer this question now. Like, now's the time to do it. So since he was, you know, a guest there and he was being, you know, respectful and submitted to the authority at that church, he answered the question and he told him, no, it's not from the Holy Spirit. It's not, it's not being led by God because if it was being led by God, you were right, it would uplift the service. And this woman heard him. And after those men had walked away, she came to Kenneth Hagin and she said, you know what? She said, you said this, you know, and repeated what he had said. And she told him, she said, you know, on the inside of me, I knew that wasn't right. And I knew it wasn't, you know, the order of what things were supposed to be doing and what God wanted me to do. But I was just trying to do it because it just sounded nice. You know, I just thought it would be good. I thought it would be of God. 
and he, he instructed her more and she, she apologized and she said that she didn't know and she made the correction and she said, well, I'm not going to do that again because she learned. So we've got to make sure that we're humble enough, like this individual, this lady, that we can learn from great, greater men of God, seasoned men of God. Because, you know, he could have said that, she could have heard him, and the first thing she could have said, well, I know that was God, and I'm not going to listen to anybody else because God is leading me and all this kind of stuff because it's from the Holy Spirit, and, and could make a whole big scene about it and continue doing something in error because she wasn't able to learn and wasn't humble enough to listen to the man of God that had come in you know, and brought instruction to their church. So make sure you don't do that to yourself. Make sure you stay humble and are able to listen to godly correction. You know, so that way if you make a mistake and somebody corrects you, you can listen to it and say, Okay, God, I heard that mistake. I'm going to change because I want to be properly led by you. I want to be used by you. I don't want to get off into the flesh or into my emotions or anything else. I want to be led by you. You know, another thing, if you do miss it, what do you do? You learn from it. You know, everyone who is, if you're humble enough to admit that you messed it and that you messed up, then you'll be able to learn why. You know, God will show you why. The Holy Spirit will show you why. He'll give you a godly teacher or somebody in your life that will show you why you messed up. And it will teach you. So then you can learn, okay, I know this is how God works. I know this isn't how God works. I know this is how His Spirit leads. I know this isn't how His Spirit leads. Because you can mess up, and when you mess up, you're like, oh, nope, that was not God. And you can go back and trace and see where you missed it at. Where you missed it at. And if you can recognize where you missed it at, you can learn from it so you don't make the same mistake again. You know, I've heard people so many times, I've talked to people about, you know, different things like that. And I've heard them tell me, you know, like, well, I knew on the inside I wasn't supposed to do such and such, but I didn't listen. Or they did it anyway. So some people already know, you know, on the inside, like, don't do that. Or don't go out and step that. Or don't go over here. But they just kind of write it off because it's such a still small voice, you know. It's, it's quiet most of the time when God talks to us or speaks to us. So then we just kind of write it off like, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. And then later we realize, oh, this was not a good thing. And then you can go back and see where the Holy Spirit was trying to lead you. And then you can recognize that. So then when he comes back to lead you the same way, you can be like, oh, nope, I know this is the Holy Spirit this time because of what had happened last time. You know, if you know how you did wrong, you can learn from it so you don't make the same mistakes again. And if you miss it and aren't sure why, then go and ask God. Go and ask the Holy Spirit. You know, you can say something and be like, hey, this didn't work out. Why didn't this happen? What did I miss? What am I doing wrong? Because even the disciples did that. You know, there's a time in Matthew 17, 17, 19 through 20, where what would have happened was the disciples were trying to lay hands on somebody who was demon-possessed and, and cast a demon out of them, and it wasn't working, and they couldn't do anything. And then Jesus came down, you know, prayed for the, the same individual, and they were set free. And then after, it says the disciples, you know, took him aside later, and they asked him. They said, Jesus, why couldn't we cast him out? You know, because they knew they could because they have done it so many times before. So they asked him, why couldn't we? And he began to give them more instruction. He said, because you don't have enough faith. And this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. So you need to spend more time in prayer. You need to spend more time fasting and grow and develop your faith. So then you can be able to cast them out again in the future. You know, if you have stubborn ones like this. So he was instructing them and teaching them. So we, we can go to God if we miss it and say, God, I missed it. I don't know how I missed it. I don't know what I did wrong. Can you show me? And he'll do it because he wants you to succeed. He wants you to learn and he wants you to understand how to be led by his spirit. And the last thing I want to talk about when it comes is, well, if I miss it, don't quit. You know, don't quit. If you miss it, don't get discouraged and say, well, I'm just never going to step out again. I'm just never going to do this again. I'm never going to say anything about God again. I'm not going to try to step out and encourage anybody about God again. I'm just going to stay in my happy little safe, comfortable bubble. Don't quit. You know, if you mess up, okay, learn from it and keep going. Keep moving and keep practicing how to be led by the Spirit of God. You know, there were times where Jesus' disciples missed it. But they didn't allow it to stop them from learning. They didn't allow it to stop them from growing. And they ended up being able to do mighty things for God. You know, leading many people to the Lord. Starting churches. Seeing miracle after miracle. 
because they continued to grow and they didn't let their mishaps or their mistakes stop them from continuing to be led by the Spirit of God. Again, thank you guys so much for listening today. I hope this was a blessing to you. And, you know, if you just want to encourage yourself in the Lord so you don't allow fear to come in and stop you from being led by the Spirit of God. And again, thank you so much for listening and God bless.